When the Ford government announced its review of regional municipalities in Ontario, some celebrated, others not so much. It's fraught whenever amalgamation and such comes up for review. Brampton, part of Peel Region, isn't among those eager for a change. Patrick Brown is the mayor of that city and he joins us now for more. Your Worship, good to Great see you here. Great to be back. I'd like to know off the top, what's Brampton's view on Mississauga's desire to quit Peel? So this has been a long-standing desire of Mississauga. Hazel McCallion pushed this before. My personal opinion, uh, uh, reflected by uh, Brampton City Council, is the greatest premier this province has ever seen, Bill Davis, uh, uh, in his wisdom in 1974, realized that it would save costs for families, for homeowners, by sharing some uh, services, whether it's policing or waste management. I think the wisdom that Bill Davis showed in 1974 still holds today. Uh, and the facts back it up. And so if it isn't broken, don't try to fix it. You can always improve it. Uh, but I think the general concept of pooling resources made sense uh, in 1974 and it makes sense today. That was 45 years ago. Things have changed since then. Doesn't need any tweaking? I said, you can always use some tweaking. You can always look for efficiencies. You can always improve. But I don't want to have three police forces. I don't want to have three water treatment centers. I don't want to have three waste management contracts. I want to get the best value for taxpayers. At the end of the day, I don't want to see tax increases on residents in Mississauga, Brampton, or Caledon. Just like Bill Davis looked out for the taxpayer years ago, I want to look out for the taxpayer. I want to make sure we protect the interests uh, of, of residents throughout Peel Region. Are you convinced taxes would go up if Mississauga were to separate? So we have two reports right now. The first one, um, commissioned by the Region of Peel, the Deloitte report, showed that it would be a billion dollars in new taxes uh, if you had to provide these services independently. Obviously, it costs more to have a smaller contract than a bigger contract. Mississauga objected to the Deloitte report. They didn't trust the reputation of Deloitte. And let me just say, uh, at, at the starting point, I think Deloitte is well recognized as being nonpartisan and objective. The second study uh, by EY Canada showed the, essentially the same thing. They said the risk could be up to $750 million in exposure for Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. It did say also in that report that if the three municipalities agreed on everything and found a use for all the municipal buildings the region currently has, then maybe there could be some upside. Having said that, uh, we don't have a use for what would be defunct regional buildings, and so we, we have to look at the EY number on the bad end, which is $750 million, and whether it's a billion or $750 million, I don't support tax increases. I'm not going to support anything that's going to cause pressure on my residents. Okay, but in fairness, bo both you and Mayor Crombie are plucking various things out of both of these reports that support your particular positions on this, and I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the people watching us right now haven't read either one of these reports. So let's, let's just try and bare bones it here if we can. If Mississauga were to leave Peel, what would that do to Brampton? Based on the report uh, done by Deloitte and EY Canada, it says taxes would go up in Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. And that's why I can't support um, blowing the region up. Uh, I can't support tax increases. Brampton this year was the only big city, the only big city in Canada to come in with a tax freeze. I want to keep that up. I want to have four years of tax freezes so I can get out there and have aggressive economic development. I want to bring industry to Brampton and skyrocketing taxes in Ontario municipalities is a recipe for disaster when it comes to economic development. Here's Mayor Crombie writing in the Toronto Star last month. She writes, Mississauga has consistently provided over 60% of the region's funding and at times as high as 77%. Yet despite providing the lion's share of the funding and having more than 50% of the population, Mississauga doesn't get an equitable fair say at the decision-making table. With five regional councillors for 70,000 people, that's the size of one ward in Mississauga, one vote from Caledon is worth four times that of Mississauga or Brampton. This is not fair or democratic, says the mayor of Mississauga. What does the mayor of Brampton say? So obviously I'd like to have greater representation for, for Brampton. Brampton has the lowest representation by virtue of population. Uh, and sure, I'd I like to, to, to see that looked at in terms of how the seats are allocated a, on the region. I'm not saying you can't improve the region, but in terms of Mississauga's contributions, the mayor of Mississauga is using a figure from 2003. We're in 2019. Uh, to use figures that are 16 years old is a disservice um, to residents in all our communities. I think we should only be using data that is based on this year. If you look at Brampton's population in 2003 compared to t today, where Mississauga's population has only gone up marginally, Brampton's has uh, 
practically doubled. We've seen explosive population growth in Brampton, and um, that's why I don't think we should engage in any misinformation. I think we, we need to deal with the facts. Okay, yeah, your, your population unquestionably yeah. has exploded over the last many years. Mm -hmm. Mississauga believes that it is subsidizing much of the development that is happening in Mississauga, given the nature of the way things work right now. But that's not what the facts in the Deloitte and the mm -hmm. EY Canada report uh, says. Uh, it says it would be a loss for Mississauga. Mississauga would have to pay more if they blew up uh, the region. And so I, I get that argument might, might, might have held in 2003. It doesn't today. And that's why Brampton Council passed a resolution saying let's look for efficiencies in the region, let's look at ways to improve the region, but let's not break the model that Bill Davis built in 1974. If Mississauga were to be given permission by the province mm -hmm. to quit Peel Region, which is ultimately mm -hmm. who has to give the authority, this mm -hmm. is nothing you guys can do, right? You need the province to say so. Should Mississauga have to compensate or pay Caledon and Brampton for that privilege? So right now we have a legal opinion from uh, Denton's uh, that uh, shows very clearly uh, that Mississauga would be on the hook. They'd be financially liable. I can't speak to what they would owe Caledon, uh, but we'd certainly be in a situation where there'd be litigation because for years we've contributed to build Mississauga's uh, infrastructure, their regional roads. We've contributed to the beautiful water treatment center that's in Mississauga. The police headquarters for the Peel Police, which we have paid for, we have built, is in Mississauga. And so obviously there'd be a big bill that Mississauga would have to pay. I'm not sure how they could afford that cost. Uh, um, Mississauga still needs to have to present that plan of how they could compensate other municipalities. They haven't explained that. Um, so yeah, there, there'd be a significant cost. Where's Peel Region headquarters? Peel Region headquarters is in Brampton. Right, and, so they'd say well, that, you know. But the difference is you could still use the police headquarters. The Peel Region headquarters, which we've contributed to equally, would have no use. Mississauga mm -hmm. wouldn't want it. We wouldn't want it. You'd have to sell it. I asked uh, Mayor Crombie these questions, so I want to ask the same ones mm -hmm. to you just to keep things on the uh, even keel here. Have you spoken to Premier Ford about this at all? So I haven't spoken to the, to the Premier about it. I've, I've spoken to some ministers. Obviously, I have... Uh, um, a series of uh, disagreements with, with the Premier. We're not on uh, talking terms. And frankly, I think Bonnie Crombie has been quite clever about this. Uh, uh, you know, she has gone out and she's been playing cricket and hobnobbing with the Premier, uh, uh, trying to uh, curry his, his favour, um, where in Brampton we have objected to the Premier's agenda. Uh, we've objected to the cuts to education. We've uh, objected to municipal downloading. M Mississauga has been mute on the on the municipal downloading. I think they're taking a different approach. Um, well, she's trying not to tick him off, yeah, lest well, she not get her way on this. And, and from my perspective, when I see something that's going wrong on a provincial level, I'm going to speak up. And I spoke up on, on the autism cuts. I spoke up on the education cuts. I spoke up on municipal downloading. I, I'm not going to uh, pretend everything is fine simply to get our way municipally. And Brampton, we, we, we're taking a principled approach to this. And we, we put the facts on the record. We have shown factually that if you get rid of the region, it will cost, it will, it will result in a tax increase for Mississauga, Brampton and Caledon residents, but at the same time, um, we're taking strong positions on the issues that matter to this province and to our residents in Brampton. Um, I don't know if this analogy makes any sense, but let me throw it out there anyway. Some Quebecers were prepared to pay more in taxes for the right to be an independent country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, for them it wasn't all about the economics, there was something about being on their own, obviously I'm talking about sovereignists, who, uh, you know, who would prefer to pay more to be on their own. If Mississaugans want to pay more to be on their own, and this isn't to say that they'd have to, but if they had to, yeah. should they be allowed that choice? Absolutely. If, if Mississauga residents uh, believe that it's worth paying more um, to not be associated with the region appeal, um, then, then they have that right. But I would say to Mississauga residents, your taxes are too high already. You do not deserve a tax increase. And crime doesn't stop at the Mississauga-Brampton border. I like having a Peel Police. I like having a coordinated response to crime. But in, Mississauga in, could in just Peel contract region. services from Peel Police in the same way they used to. You think we'd ever stand for having our police headquarters in, in a different city? Um, there's no other case like that in the country. Uh, if, if you blow up the region, you're blowing up the, 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 the Peel Police. Uh, and, and I think it makes sense to share these services. Um, it, the Water Treatment Centre, you know, it, it saved us significant resources because we've all contributed to that. Uh, um, I, I really think it may be a nice soundbite. It might be a nice political rhetoric saying we want to be independent.
but you are independent. You're in charge of all your own uh, policy decisions. We just pool resources at the regional level to save funds for taxpayers. And I think it comes to this. Do you want to engage in political rhetoric that might sound nice, or do you want to support the best bottom line for your residents? And the best bottom line for residents in Mississauga, in Brampton, and in Caledon, with two evidence-based reports supporting this, says very clearly, keep the region together, maintain Bill Davis's legacy, and put taxpayers first. You're definitely going to win the prize for mentioning Bill Davis's name the most. <laughs> I'm here, a bit of a fan. <laughs> here in the Bill Davis studio, we get that. Um, but tell me this. You know, a lot of people believe that history is biography. And at the moment, um, her personal relationship with the Premier of Ontario and the Minister, Minister of Municipal Affairs is a lot better than yours. And, and do you think it's possible that at the end of the day, this decision is going to be made on the basis of the facts or on the basis of your really terrible relationship with the current Premier of Ontario? So let me say I, I've got a good relationship with most ministers. Uh, I, I hear from the Minister of Municipal Affairs uh, Steve Clark. R regularly, and, and frankly, I think he's a very competent um, individual, and, and I do think he'll do his research. Uh, uh, in terms of the Mississauga's mayor's approach to, um, to suck up to the premier to try to curry favor, that's not something I'm going to engage in, and, and, and frankly, I hope the provincial government uh, will make this decision based on what's best for taxpayers, not uh, who's uh, trying to curry favor the most. Uh, um, this should be about taxpayers, not about uh, um, people's uh, uh, past history or personal okay. relationships. You say that's what it should be about, but are you concerned that your bad relationship with the Premier will at the end of the day be a decisive factor here? I believe I'm on the right side of the issues uh, where I have disagreements with, with the Premier, and so would I change anything? No. Uh, having said that, uh, if, if, he, if the Premier makes a decision that hurts taxpayers, um, I think it will be his own loss. If he, if, he, if he takes a decision that results in municipal taxes going up uh, across Mississauga, where he has five seats, I think residents will be upset. If he makes a decision that results in taxes going up in Brampton and Caledon, where he has um, three seats, I think uh, uh, people would be upset. And so I think ultimately he needs to decide uh, uh, whether, um, whether the personal disagreements I have with Doug Ford outweigh his own uh, political agenda and he tells us he wants to look after taxpayers well he has an opportunity right now to say we're gonna hold the line on taxes for municipalities or he can engage in um, in changes to municipalities that will result in downloading and additional cost to municipalities and I hope he does what's right for taxpayers that's Patrick Brown, the mayor of Brampton. We're grateful that you made the, how long did it take you to get here today? Two and a half hours? Traffic is too, it, Tell is me about it a problem. It. Yeah. Tell me about it, yeah. Well, however long it took, we're grateful you managed to make it here to Young and Eglinton in the middle of Toronto. Thanks so much. My pleasure. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.